Um, so I'll get uh, right to it. Uh, what are you? What have you kind of been up to over the past few months uh, amid COVID, and and how has it kind of impacted your tours, your shows? I know you had to cancel a whole bunch. Yeah, I mean, in, by impacted, it's like if you imagine an impact being like a violent event, <laughs> like a like an asteroid. It's been deep impact. <laughs> I think if, you, if, you, if there was one reference I could make, it would be the film Deep Impact from the one of the great disaster films of. Uh, I think it was the late 90s 96 97 um, yeah 96 97 yeah the heyday i think some might say but <laughs> uh and yeah no the, the the shows have been obliterated although you know that's not entirely fair because uh as much as I, the, most of the summer was wiped out we did manage to play a few shows two in toronto at uh, sort of drive-in style um uh, show you know in front of cars and mm -hmm. park in the parking lot but it ended up being actually quite a quite a uh, beautiful couple of nights for sure and we also played the Ottawa Blues Fest did a drive-in version this year we were lucky enough to be there so we've we had three shows under our belts under the current sort of uh, regime uh, but uh, considering that we thought it was going to be at least a year before we had a chance to get up on stage again we'll consider ourselves lucky <laughs> Is it, uh, is it kind of odd? Uh, like, I guess you could probably feed off the audience a bit when you can see them in person. So is it a bit more difficult when you have to see them sitting in their cars and instead of cheering, they're honking the horns? I mean, nothing's really strange these days anymore. <laughs> so I think we'd already had three, four months of, of, of lockdowns and, and sort of pandemic living at that point. So no, it didn't feel strange at all. We were just really, really excited to be back up there playing again. Um, and, and again, I, I don't think we realized just how much we we take for granted that the summertime for us is is a time when we're on tour, traveling from city to city, beautiful nights under the stars, playing music, and that's been our life for the for the majority of our lives now. That that's been how we've spent our summers. So to have just a little bit of a taste of that again. Uh, obliterated any any unease or misgivings about you know the nature of the, the show or the audience so and people after a while you kind of realize yeah there's there's a living breathing human being in that car <laughs> it's not just all auto parts mm -hmm. you know and um as much as i'm into sci-fi and like the idea of potentially playing a show for sort of <laughs> car actual kind of sort of robot cars at some mm -hmm. point uh <laughs> I grew up in the age of the Transformers, so I still hold on to to that, mm -hmm. potentially playing a show for <laughs> Autobots, Decepticons one day, but uh, no, it was it was a lot of fun. Cool. Um, so then you uh, you have a new album out, and I was doing some reading on it, and it's it the whole uh, kind of message behind the album seems like, you know, coming together and trying times, but then the really cool thing is you had this finished before we ever went into lockdown. So tell me mm -hmm. a bit about uh, all of us and uh, and how it came about. Well, I, I was working on it the same way that I would on on any record uh, right here in, the, in this room in my, in my basement, in my home in Montreal, and not thinking for a second that the release of this record would take place in the sort of conditions and circumstances that we find ourselves in. Uh, so so if, the, if there's any uh, connection to COVID-19 and the, and the reality that it comes with, it wasn't intentional, that's for sure. But uh, we're finding out these days what, what it means to make, make music under a different, again, under different conditions. So uh, it was, it, it's strange to think back now, if I go back to sort of starting this record, uh, probably about two, two and a half years ago, writing the first songs that, you know, you, you're, you're completely oblivious to the fact that at some point this is going to be all filtered through the lens of a global pandemic. Uh, but in terms of the in terms of the sort of content of the record and what motivated the record, it, it, you know, I don't write music for trying times necessarily. Mm -hmm. I'm not sitting down saying, okay, life is difficult. I'm, I need to write a song about it. I write songs because I've always written songs since I was a kid. I don't really, uh, I'm not sure what the motivation for that is or why, um, 
what what prompts you to sit down and hit record or put pen to paper but i do it and then it's only afterwards that it sort of takes on the complexion of the times and the realities of 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 the world around you mm -hmm. and it's it's one of the amazing things about music i find is that regardless of what your intent is or your intentions that they it, it will act as almost a sponge and soak in a lot of the sort of um yeah the the emotions and the mm -hmm. and the the colors around you whether whether that's what you're trying to do or not and and this record i think m more than than any i've ever made before has acted that way whether again whether i wanted to or not and uh this record was completed uh, i think you mentioned just hours before kind of lockdowns went into place mm -hmm. it so was, what was literally <laughs> <laughs> what was the process like then afterwards like I, I don't know too much about making a record but um mm -hmm. with covid and being locked down was there any challenges after the record was finished for whatever else you had to do with it yeah, for sure. I mean, the first the first challenge is actually being physically in the same room as your as your bandmates and the producer to make the record. So that was the that was the biggest hurdle. And I think we were lucky enough, like you said, to sort of come in right under the wire right before the first lockdown. We were driving home, listening to the news, and they were announcing that we we're all going to be locked down uh, from the studio that we're at in in northern Quebec, and. Uh, following that when you finish making a record the next thing you do is mix the record which is to take all this all the tracks that you've recorded and to give them shape and proportion mm -hmm. and it's it's essentially what you hear as a as a listener is the is the result of the mix and so fortunately mixing can ha happen via remote so the mixer will sit there in his studio you know put together a version of the song, send it to myself or my bandmates, and we'll comment on it and say, oh, the drums are too quiet, the vocals are too loud, you know, and then we kind of go through this sort of back and forth process and get that <laughs> into the shape that we eventually want it to be. So we were kind of quite busy still for the first little while, and 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 it almost sort of delayed the sinking in of the <laughs> of the truth that <laughs> that the, the changes that were happening were much more profound and were going to affect us for a longer time so we were kind of yeah just kept busy and then by the time mixing ended i, I was a, basically a full-time school teacher at home for my three kids <laughs> uh, because they'd been you know the schools had shut down and mm -hmm. and so i got distracted by geography and history <laughs> and french for the next few months and yeah i think it was only really in the summertime that it, it started to sink in it's like wait why am i not going on the you know <laughs> going out on the road Absolutely. what's happening here <laughs> um any song on the album that you're especially that kind of speaks to you more or that you feel that uh fits more for what people might be going through uh right now well you know it depends uh, it depends on 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 the day sometimes for me i think that there there are a few songs that i find more more personal uh and and from that i mean writing from the perspective of my own memories and my own uh, life in i guess a more autobiographical sense and and uh so you're always a little bit more it's not that you like them more but you're just a bit more protective of those songs mm -hmm. because they're they're revealing something and so for me, a song like War Chest or Spellbound, Wolf Tracks too. See, I've already at, I'm already at three. <laughs> I'm already at three out of nine songs. So, it's, so I'm not it goes down. You know, uh, those the, those to me are the songs that uh, you know. Again, it's you're not necessarily intentionally writing uh, to connect with other people, but if you write close enough to your own um close enough to your own truth or whatever the word is then other people will find common ground there because you know as human beings as 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 different as we all can be there is a uh, uh there's a thread that binds us all together and i think if you kind of write close to that um then you'll find a way to connect with other people P pandemic or no pandemic and mm -hmm. and uh um 
I'm, I guess I'm, I'm always aware of the fact that if I, if, if I write something that's personal enough that somebody else out there listening will say, hey, that, that sounds an awful lot like what I'm going through right now. Uh, and then, yeah, then that thread starts to weave its way through, through people's lives. And, and uh, I've, you know, I think that that's one of the more powerful things that music brings to us all. Absolutely. Uh, will you be doing any uh, kind of live stream shows? I know a lot of uh, artists are starting to do those uh, in the coming months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done a few. We did one on Canada Day and, uh, you know, we've, we've tried to experiment with different formats and it's almost like, you know, we're talking about virtual backgrounds. It's the mm -hmm, same thing yeah. as live stream. All of a sudden you just have to sort of, you're, you're, you're scrambling <laughs> to find some new way of presenting the same thing essentially. But uh, I think now that we've got a record out and there's new music to play that other people, you know, have, have heard and can sing along to, then it's time to, uh, to do that. So in the next couple of weeks, we're, we're going to be trying to knock together, uh, I guess, kind of something that would re representative of what it would be like if we were actually going out on tour right now, mm -hmm. which is what we would be doing after an album launch and just, uh, trying to play new music for the first time, trying to figure out a way to play it live, which is completely different uh, uh, than what you do in the studio. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're gonna try to, to replicate the uncertainty of an early album launch tour. <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, you kind of mentioned it there, but uh, going into next year, if things get back to a new normal or somewhat normal, what's kind of on tap for you beyond uh, the live stream shows and promoting the album? Yeah, I mean, we're, if, if things get back to normal and if that means touring again, then we're gonna come out of the gates like a rocket, you know? I mean, we're, <laughs> we'll have a lot of pent up energy and frustration at that point. So uh, we keep planning tours and I'm sure every, this, is, this is probably representative of a lot of people's lives, whether you play in a, a rock and roll band or not you're just we keep making these future plans right now and at first those future plans were you know fall of 2020 now then they went to okay no we're probably talking <laughs> about winter 2021 mm -hmm. now we're looking at summer 2021 and so right now our, our sort of golden age that's about that's you know around the corner is some somewhere in the summer of 2021 and um i'm sticking to that with every <laughs> optimistic fiber of my being you know so <laughs> um you mentioned that you know you you have to go away on tour uh usually in the summers and such so mm -hmm. is it kind of uh there's a positive to the fact that you you were home through the summer you got to spend uh the summer with your kids and your family um and so next year will be kind of another adjustment to go back like you said on tour and and not be uh home through the summer yeah, for sure. I mean, I think my, you know, my bandmates and I have been, have been in some ways dreaming about a summer where we didn't tour just to, to do exactly what you're saying, to spend, have that summer where you're just around your kids all the time and mm -hmm. uh, going on camping trips and things like that. Unfortunately, this being the summer that that happened, finally, we weren't allowed to do it, <laughs> especially, <laughs> in, uh, especially in Quebec, yeah. where we've had a bit of a rough ride. So it was like the summer the fantasy summer that never was kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I don't know, but um, we did spend a lot of quality time together for sure. So I don't think they'll begrudge us if we have to go out there and uh, hit the road again next year. Um, and uh, I've talked to a few artists uh, over the past few months and I like to ask them uh, about the arts. Do you feel like COVID and everybody being home, uh, looking for ways to be entertained, that COVID is showing people the importance of, the arts in our lives, whether it's music or, or shows or books or uh, what, what have you? I hope so, you know, I mean, I, I really do. I hope that uh, people are seeing um, the value. And sometimes, again, it takes uh, deprivation to fully appreciate something, you know, not being able to go to a concert, not being able to go to a theater um, or an art gallery. Uh, and then connecting the dots that, oh, wait, if I don't go to a concert, how is that musician who's provided such joy in, in, you know, in our lives able to sustain their way of life? And the same thing goes for painters and, uh, and writers and playwrights. And, uh, 
I do feel like in Quebec, you know, and Canada in general, we have, a, I think we have a, a good sense of the value of the arts far more so than some places. Um, but I think at this time you realize just how, it, how dire it gets when we can't physically sort of go out and, and show support like that. So uh, there's no question that musicians and artists are probably at home right now doing what they do, uh, which is trying to make something that positively or, you know, either challenges or affects mm -hmm. people's lives in some ways. But there has to be a way to figure out how to uh, make it viable, how to, how to, that they can survive and dedicate. It does take dedication too. It's not a hobby. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of the misconception a lot of times is that this is just like a, you know, oh, you just happen to be a creative person. So you can dedicate part of your time and your mind to mm -hmm. that creative pursuit endeavor. But it's not like that. It's a full vocational way of life. And it requires all of your time and attention and energy. And so you just hope that the public realizes that and finds a way, the way we support other, other industries, that we find a way to support the artistic community as well. Uh, because if you take it out of the equation, you know, mm -hmm. life would be pretty bleak. <laughs> pretty, I think everybody boring. knows that. <laughs> pretty yeah. boring so yeah um and uh do you think after covid um things will be different with how albums are made how concerts are done uh like is do you feel like this might be a seismic shift in in how we experience a lot of things uh that we maybe took for granted uh, earlier mm -hmm. i don't know that's a good question and and obviously uh we'll see music recording music has changed so much since uh, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, as it is, it's already on a sort of, uh, you know, fast paced track to some new reality anyway, in terms of uh, being able to do things in your home that you used to have to go into a multi-million dollar studio and, you know, spend um, heaps of money to sort of make a record. Now mm -hmm. people are making incredible music out of a, out of a laptop. Um, so, I mean, that, again, I think that the lack of funds will, will drive that even further, that people will become that, will have to become that much more self-sufficient mm -hmm. that way. Um, so, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not really sure in terms of concerts e either. I still don't see anything quite being able to duplicate the the experience of being in a crowd of, you know, 200 people singing with all their hearts of, you know, sweating and writhing and, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, or in a crowd of 10,000 people uh, watching their favorite band again, under the, under an open sky. It's, it's hard to imagine anything else um, ever, ever sort of replacing that. So, yeah. and I hope it doesn't. Absolutely.